The T26E3 Eagle 7 is an upcoming tier 7 American medium tank which will possibly be the reward for the American Independence 4th of July event happening at the 4th of July. So what do we know about this tank? Well, pretty much everything, so stick around for the rest of this video and I'll tell you all about it. Oh, and don't mind the RHM gameplay in the background, that's just there so we don't just have a black screen, stats and numbers for the rest of this video. So starting with everybody's favourite thing about a tank, its gun. What the T26E3 has is essentially a Persian gun but down tier. So it comes with the same damage, but because it's got relatively high alpha damage for its tier, you lack in DPM, as you can see here, with 1850 damage per minute, but 225 alpha damage, which will feel quite nice at tier 7, and it comes with good penetration as well at 160mm. And also your premium ammo is also AP, which comes with several advantages and disadvantages, such as a higher normalisation, but a reduced shell velocity compared to something like APCR. It also comes with 202mm on its premium AP, which if you're a gold spammer, you'll feel fairly comfortable comfortable taking on those tier 7 and tier 8 heavies. Its reload time is 7.3 seconds, which reflects its relatively low damage per minute, although it's not ridiculously long like a T-34-1. And now onto the gun handling. It has a very good base aim time at 1.7 seconds, the best amongst tier 7 mediums, and to go along with this it also has fairly good gun dispersion at 0.34, meaning you will hit a large majority of your shots. However, its dispersion factors when moving, so how much the aiming circle blooms out when you move is the worst. It's at 0 0.17, which, is, which will feel horrible, so this tank is definitely a shoot while stationary sort of vehicle. Although it's average when rotating the turret, so don't, don't be afraid to do that in this tank. It's got very nice gun depression at 10 degrees, and you'll see later when you look at the armor profile. Its mantlet is well armoured, takes up the majority of its turrets, so you can do hull down and peekaboo over ridgeline in this thing and bounce a lot of shots that come at you. And its gun elevation is also very comfortable at 20 degrees. And now onto its mobility, which is bad news for the Eagle 7. It has the worst maximum forward speed at tier 7 mediums at 40 km per hour, but it does have one of the best backward speeds at 21 km per hour. Its power to weight ratios, well not awful and not very good either also worst in class at 15 12 and 7 on their respective terrains and its traverse speed is also worst in class but still not terrible at 40 32 and 20 on respective terrains its size is average so you won't be dodging too many shots in this thing and its concealment is also towards the worst end but still not terrible at 22 percent while still 17 percent while moving and five percent while firing so so you'll be spotted most of the time, though you could hide if you really wanted to. Its weight clocks in at a healthy 40 tons, so if you can ram another medium or light in this thing, wow, are they gonna feel it. And looking at its armor profile, it has between 130 and 140 millimeters on its upper plate, which means against tier sixes, this thing will always be bouncing on its upper plate unless they switch to premium ammo, which will feel very nice. And it has a very funky lower plate at some points being around 140 millimeters. And on these weird triangle things, it seems to be 120 millimeters, which is quite weird. But then on these rings at the side, which the drive wheels connect to, it drops down to about 100 millimeters. On the sides of the tank as well, it's about 76 millimeters, so nothing's gonna be bouncing off the side. And you've got that classic American arse, which HE will go through all day long. As for the turret, as you can see, this mantlet is over 200 millimeters thick, which means absolutely nothing is going to be going through this unless it's a tier 8 heavy or a tier 8 TD. And its cheeks are also fairly well armored at around at between 130 and 160 millimeters. So in a hold down, this thing will excel. Though it's a couple of, well, you might think it would let you down. It's still got a between 120 and 150 millimeters, which is still fairly healthy. And if you're going backwards and forwards in this thing, this thing is going to be a very hard tank to penetrate while it's turret is only exposed, although it does have fairly poor armour on the sides and rear of its turret at 67mm and 67mm. So overall this thing's armour is typical American, very strong turret, decent-ish hull armour, but paper sides and a HEable rear, so do not angle in this thing. So overall its armour is going to be good frontally against tier 6s, okay-ish against tier 7s, but its turret is going to work against all the tiers it can meet. So to sum up the tank in general, a decent gun, Poor mobility for a medium, decentish armor, so pretty much a well rounded, average, balanced tier 7. But what did you think Wargame was going to give us an overpowered tier 7 in a free event? No way, they'd never do something like that. 
So I hope you learned something about the T26 E3 Eagle 7. And if you really would like to, I would very much appreciate if you subscribed, liked the video, and maybe, I don't know, tell me what you think about the T26 in the comments below. Thank you very much.